I've spent a lot of time at the Scottish Jewish Archive Centre since 2003, probably earlier, 2003 when I started my PhD research and I made, made a connection with the Scottish Jewish Archives maybe even before then. We've, done, we've worked together over many years with the um, archiving, the collection of my aunt, Hannah Frank, but there were eight, when she died, there were eight crates of, um, eight crates of letters and cards and scrapbooks and all kinds of things that went to the Scottish Jewish Archives. And I worked closely with Deborah on doing the archiving of all of that, the cataloging of all of that. Um, so I've been watching her along the way um, organising exhibitions, um, particularly in the field of Goldberg, and went to the fabulous exhibition at Strathclyde. And it's a great, and I'm really pleased that she has agreed to come and speak with us today. And I look forward to hearing Deborah Haas from. The, oh, another thing about Deborah Haas, I was very excited when I went to the when I went on a tour of the um, Scottish Parliament recently that she's recognised as a special woman who has her memory of artists in the, um, enshrined, in the, in, enshrined in the Scottish Parliament. I was so excited that I actually knew two of the women that were up there, Deborah being one of them. So um, Deborah Hart from the Scottish Jewish Archives on the life and time, the life and work of Hilda Goldberg. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. Hi Fiona. Hi everybody. Um, thanks for a lovely, lovely introduction. Um, my uh, background, I started off in um, uh, archaeology and um, medieval history and uh, uh, got into museums, um, always thinking out was to do with the, what I call the dirty hand subjects as opposed to the lovely fine art and decorative arts. Um, and then, uh, but of course you work in museums and my, um, you have to deal with everything. And I slowly got to kind of discover art a bit more close up um, and uh, had some wonderful experiences in places north of, the, north of Glasgow, Kirkintilloch, and then Stirling, and then latterly in Glasgow. Um, so that was how I suppose I kind of got a chance to get a bit more involved with art and, and really in a way how I, I got to know Hilda um, because latterly at, in, with Glasgow Museums um, I uh, was involved in work uh, to do with the Holocaust and the effect of that in Scotland and um, working with the late Marianne Grant um, and, um, and that is specifically uh, directly what, what led me um, to meet uh, Hilda. Um, but before I do that, I've got some images and things, and if Fiona's taught me right, I think what I am going to do is um, try and bring up my images and um, uh, now, wait a minute. Oh, no, wait, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did Fiona say? Click on share screen. No. I've got to do share screen, first of all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where's my wee note? Share screen, um, my uh, desktop. Uh, oh, right, sorry. I've not learned properly what you said. <laughs> or maybe I have, actually. Then you, then you can go and click on the presentation. Now I can click on that, that's right. So for everybody, just hold on a moment, for everybody else, if if everyone else, where you can see on your computers where it says you are viewing Deborah Haas's screen, if you click um, on view options and click on side by side mode, you can then see Deborah and the drawing and you can pull it across so you can have Deborah as big as you like and the drawing and the screen as big as you like. Okay, back to Deborah. I'll mute myself. Has, has that worked for everybody? That's perfect. Yeah. Um, I don't think I can see ev everybody, but. Um, um, yeah, I can't see everybody. So I, I hope I hope that's that's has that worked? Is everybody okay with that, Fiona? You can see everybody. Yep. Okay. All right. Oh no, well, that's great. So with Louise and Vivian and Edward, that I can see if you can all nod to say you can that's see. That's fine. Yep, great. Yeah. Thanks. All right. No, that's super. It's lovely. it's lovely to see everybody today. I'm sorry I haven't been able to join uh, in all the talks, but I'm really pleased to see that I can go back and 
and hear the ones that I've missed and um, it just sounds really interesting and I'm, I will I'm, I'm, I want to try and, and come along but there have been um, I'm involved with this project with the Archive Centre and can talk a bit more about it later on um, if we've got time and it just demands a bit of time when, and you don't know when it's going to happen and sometimes it's on a Thursday morning so um, but it is lovely to do that and it, it's actually lovely to uh, to talk about Hilda. Um, I met her 16 years ago this week, um, this month, it was the, I think it, it was the 10th of May, so this is the 14th, so just about 16 years ago, um, there's a lovely picture of Hilda, um, and I met her, she was then um, a, demean, a little lady of 92 years of age, um, I thought she looked a lot younger, um, and um, she was quite hard of hearing and she was quite wobbly on her feet. Um, I, I, I was introduced to her through Paula Cowan, who some of you might know, who's been very involved with um, Holocaust education in Scotland. And through, um, Fiona mentioned the Scottish Parliament, the photograph in the Scottish Parliament. And that's there because of a, uh, an art project um, in which I was, fortunate to be able to write a sentence about Marianne Grant and her Holocaust artworks. Um, and when I worked at Glasgow Museums, uh, we did a, um, we acquired a collection of, of Marianne Grant's um, Holocaust uh, period artworks, which are on show, and I hope people will get in to see them if you haven't seen them. Um, and um, got involved with Paula, in the creation of an education pack for Scottish schools. So it was Paula who said to me, you know about art, which of course I thought, do I? I don't know, but anyway, um, I, um, please come and, uh, will, will you come and see uh, Hilda, who has a flat stuffed full of paintings. Um, so to cut a long story short, me contact and Hilda very kindly um, allowed me to come and visit her, uh, her little flat in Knightswood, just north of Glas north of Glasgow. And I mean, her flat was, was immaculate. Um, the walls were hung with paintings. The table was set for afternoon tea and Hilda had baked a cake and I so remember it. It was a, an almond sponge with cream uh, topping decorated with peaches. And um, so it was just lovely to, to meet this feisty artist. And all around the flat were her artworks. And, and I just thought her paintings were terrific. Um, there, was, uh, there were Glasgow, I've got some illustrations of her. So let's, um, there were um, Glasgow tenements um, in the midst of destruction. And for those of us who grew up in Glasgow in the 60s and 70s, I mean, this is what we saw. Um, all around us, um, scenes of like Charing Cross and with gaping cavernous excavations going on um, when they were building the new motorway that ripped through the city. There was pictures of the low rise uh, flats around her in Knightswood um, and uh, views of um, some of the tenements. I thought that was an amazing view, that one, extraordinary. Um, I, in my first uh, museum posting, was just north of Glasgow in Kirkintilloch. Uh, Forth and Clyde Canal runs through there. And I had got very involved with the canal, was saving a puffer boat and, and got involved with the Forth and Clyde Canal Society and everything. And it's just such an amazing uh, industrial archaeological, industrial feature of, and so important in Glasgow, in Scotland's history, the building of the Forth and Clyde Canal. And there was Hilda had been out there painting the remnants of the um, of the Forth and Clyde Canal. So of course that resonated hugely with me as well. Um, I think that one was 1976. The date is on that painting there. Um, another one from around the canal. Uh, it's 1983. Uh, yeah, I think that was 1983. Um, I don't know, when I look at that painting, I almost want to weep. I think it's just so, it's so sad. I mean, in a way, uh, Glasgow in the late 60s, 70s and so on, um, early 70s was a really 
was a kind of, I think, a sad place. It had not uh, moved on. It hadn't discovered Glasgow miles better. Um, it wasn't the cool, hip place that um, it's kind of moved itself onto where you really want to come to. There were lots of issues. And to me, that was just kind of full of, of, of sadness and a lot of things about Glasgow, um, but about Hilda as, as well. Um, I said my first museum posting was in um, was Strathkelv, then the new Strathkelvin District Council, just uh, Kirk and Tillich, Bishop Riggs out that way. It was a whole new world to me who had grown up on the south side of Glasgow. Um, and there it was laid out by Hilda in this amazing, these amazing paintings out in Torrance of the agricultural landscape. And um, so, I mean, her paintings were just resonating with me um, looking around her um, of the, the Glasgow I grew up. And then there were beautiful flower paintings, trees, the lovely cherry trees, um, amazing, fascinating portrait. I can't, sorry, remember who this is because some of the information is in the archive and um, not that that painting is, but the details, I cannot remember who that lady is, but is that not the most wonderful portrait of somebody? I kind of feel that lady went to live in Israel. It's got really that strong, uh, personality about her and and, um, and this one um, was up in, in this in the snow it's uh, I don't if I point can you see no I don't think you can um, or maybe I can do that this is Garnet Hill can you see that it's actually Hill Street in Glasgow where Garnet Hill Synagogue is and Hilda was um, living at the time when she did this in Hill Street um, in, in Glasgow um, and there's another Fabulous one she did of two nuns going down the street in Hill Street in the snow. It's hysterical. Um, I thought that was lovely. Yeah, just nice that. So um, I wanted to, you know, I, I was just really struck by these pictures. Um, and I, I loved her, her viewpoint of it and, um, and her, the colour, the boldness, the sort of, physical kind of texture of the paintings. And this was a Glasgow that I was familiar with, but quite honestly, I'd never seen it in an art gallery or anywhere else. I, my art education was maybe too limited or it just wasn't really being represented in that sort of way. And it was also a Glasgow that um, was very much as a disappearing or and changing uh, radically. So to me, it was, it was art and it was social history. And, coming from my kind of history background, I think there was a special kind of um, spark in it for me. Um, I mean, obviously Hilda was a really talented uh, artist and prolific. Um, and not only was there art on the walls in her flat, that first painting that I'd shown you, the racks in her, in her little, in her bedroom studio, but there were two hall cupboards that were stuffed full of paintings. Um, and in the wardrobe, in her wardrobe, in, in, in her studio where there were sketchbooks and, and a box of scarves uh, that she had designed. And there were, on the bookshelves, there were volumes of poetry and school uh, textbooks that she had illustrated. Um, so I, I absolutely wanted to know more. And um, what I uh, learned was that um, Hilda had, uh, was, was born in 1912 in, in Vienna to a Jewish family. Um, her father was an artist, uh, had been an artist, but he had died when she was a, a youngster. She was only, I think, nine years old. Um, but she always said she remembered watching him uh, mix up the paints. And she was obviously a talented young artist. Um, this is from one of her school jotters in 1925. Um, and uh, it's, there's quite a number in the, arc, in the Scottish Jewish Archive Centre. There's, when Hilda came to Scotland, as she did, uh, she brought a lot of her, her um, early school jotters and some of her school early um, uh, paintings and things that she did when she was uh, quite young. Um, and, um, so um, she was obviously a talented young artist. She 
went to a special school which I um, for talented young youngsters and the students at that were asked uh, by a local architect to paint a mural in a, a, for a new kindergarten that was being built and the architect after the project produced a little photo album that he gave to the I think they were all girls because you can see in the middle picture they're all there that's that's Hilda there um, and uh, and it was obviously a treasured possession of Hilda and she brought that that with her and you could get a sense I think that might be Hilda here I think that one is her um, but I'm not 100% sure it's a bit hard to tell but they're all there together and you could get a sense of the kind of mural that they were painting for the kinder the uh, this new um, kindergarten school. So she was a talented um, a young artist and um, maybe not surprisingly then she went on to art school and um, this is also a document that's in the archives, Scottish Jewish Archives Centre and it's her registration card um, from the, the graphic design school that she attended in Vienna and you can see she's there 1937-38 um, and she, um, which was obviously uh, a critical time. She was just coming to the end of her course. Um, she did complete her course. She did uh, graduate as far as I understand. Um, but of course, those of us who remember the history in March 1938, um, uh, Nazi Germany annexed Austria and the Anschluss um, and the, the world was, was rapidly changing. Um, but as I say, Hilda, Jewish student, but still she managed to do that. And you can see the stamp on here is the Austrian stamp. So what was going to happen uh, to Hilda? Um, so in Scotland, uh, in the 1930s, early in 19, um, the 1930s, uh, Max Born, who be is, became the Nobel Prize winning nuclear physicist, came out early with his wife and his children. And um, he happened in 1938 to be in Edinburgh. Uh, he was the Tate Professor at Edinburgh University. Um, his wife, Hedwig, got involved with uh, other Jewish and um, Quaker women and they um, formed a, an organization called the Scottish Domestic Bureau for Refugees. Um, and what they tried to do was to um, help um, women who were trying to flee, mostly Jewish but not all, from Nazi Germany and and uh, I think Austria and maybe from other bits, but I, I can't tell you that categorically. Um, by getting them a visa to come out as a domestic. Because curiously enough, um, during the First World War, you'll remember the men were sent to the front and women were called up to fill the vacant posts um, in serve public service and transport and all sorts of different areas armaments and everything now a lot of those women who went to do that work had come out from domestic service and at the end of the first world war they didn't really want to go back into domestic service it was drudgery it wasn't so well paid conditions were not so good so in the 20s and the 30s when domestic work was still incredibly labor intensive um, in terms of you know water heating cleaning all cooking all the different aspects of it um, the middle and upper classes had a real problem securing domestic help and the UK government allowed a number of people to come in on domestic visas um, and this bureau and there's obviously the same activity is going on down south um, focused on this and saved quite a number of people's lives and Hilda was one of them. Now like Hilda most of them were not 
trained, were not, you know, domestic, being a domestic was not what their uh, plan in life was. And for some of them, it was incredibly difficult experiences. Another lady I know of an, uh, who uh, was an artist who ended up in, in Ayrshire and then in London, desperately, desperately unhappy. She just really, really struggled with it. Um, but, um, and ha so what happened was that um, uh, Max and, and um, Hedwig's daughter, Grittily, was in Vienna, knew Hilda and said to her, basically, what are you going to do? And Hilda didn't know what she was going to do. And Grittily said, well, my mum wants to try and help people like you. And, um, and, that's, and that, that, that's what happened. And they managed to secure a, a permit um, for Hilda to come out. Um, not now to come out, uh, it wasn't necessarily so straightforward. She had, you had to have a passport and um, Hilda's passport, which is in the archives, an amazing document charting uh, the route and so on. Um, but there it is stamped 26th of January, 1939. And it's got the Nazi regime stamp on it. Even, and it's got the J because she's Jewish, the red J. Um, and, uh, but she's got a passport, which she obviously needs uh, to come out. Um, and she also had to get permission for everything that she brought out. You couldn't just send stuff and pack and, and whatever. So here's her list um, and of what she, and the translation at the side. So you can see the kind of things that she was able to bring out, um, the numbers of things. And um, ink for the fountain pen, notebook, documents and certificates, thankfully she did bring, obviously important, she didn't know how long she was coming for. She didn't know, uh, you know, what it was going to be. She brought her snowshoes. I don't know how useful they were in Glasgow, but she did. Um, so there you are, you can see the list. It's an extraordinary, I think it's a very moving uh, document. It's um, extraordinary. I don't know who's writing that is. It might be Hilda's, and um, probably is actually. I'm not 100% sure about that. She wrote it and then it was, handed in and, um, and approved. But she's got that dated the 14th of January, 1939. Um, and we know she left in March. And there you are, she got to Peebles in, in uh, 29th of April, 1939. She's in Peebles. And the reason she's in Peebles is because the posting that she got as a domestic servant was in a Church of Scotland minister's manse in West Linton. Um, so Hilda escaped from Nazi uh, Europe and survived. Um, very sadly, her, her mum, her brother, her wee nephew, who she adored, um, little toddler, uh, did not get out. Um, and I think that to me, have, when I got to know Hilda, that tragedy is there in virtually every one of the paintings and the draw, everything that, that, that she did, her paintings. To me, it, it's in there, in them. Um, she tried to get permits. I have seen somewhere that she was able to get it, but by the time it got there, remember war started on the 3rd of August and that was it. Europe was a closed scenario, so, um, it was lost. She lost, and she lost them in the um, in the Holocaust. For Hilda, there she is, nineteen thirty nine. It's lovely, isn't it? Nice portrait uh, of her, and she looks not desperately unhappy there. There's a nice um, smile about her. Now this one is love. This is. Um, Hilda on the left, and this lady here on the right is Cecile Schwarzschild. Cecile uh, came from um, Germany, from the Odenwald. She was also uh, a ref uh, she came as a refugee um, before the war started, 
also over in the Edinburgh direction. And uh, Hilda and Ceci met at the Quaker Friends Meeting House in Edinburgh and they became the best of friends and they were together forever from then on in, from the rest of their lives. Um, and uh, so there's a nice picture of them, not sure, I don't know 100% of the date, I suspect that might, might be during, during the war or just after the war. Um, but they look, they look, nice, look good together. So, and Ceci was obviously, yeah, really, really important. Um, when war broke out, the refugees that were in the Edinburgh area uh, were all transferred out because they were regarded it was an area of um, um, military importance. And so there was a big move from the refugees and most of them came through to Glasgow. And the Garnet Hill area in Glasgow and the West End became a real focus for the refugees. So Garnet Hill Synagogue, if you know, um, next door to, uh, in, in, uh, in Glasgow, next door to it, the synagogue had the, a building and they gave that building over and it became a hostel for refugee boys. And there's a building just the other side of, of Garnet Hill Synagogue, sort of um, kind of hostel for travellers, and it became a, a refugee hostel for girls and women. And um, Hilda was, in, was there for a little while, um, but she settled in a flat in Hill Street, like two along virtually from the synagogue, um, close to the art school and the whole vibe that was going along in, in Glasgow. And she met and befriended a number of people who were involved with the art school there. Um, so uh, Hilda and Ceci are in, moved to, to the Garnet Hill area, they live in Hill Street, and eventually uh, they're given permission to do war work. And Hilda worked as a turner uh, in Govan in a uh, metalworking uh, hurt her back, which troubled her all her the rest of her life. Um, but that's where um, what what they were doing. And I think this photograph also what's set up around this area just along from the art school for those of you who know that neck of the woods where the dental hospital is there's an older building and a newer building and where the newer building was during the war period there was a house and it was uh, became um, a refugee center and it was a place where the refugees could go and speak their language eat the food share uh, common times with uh, fellow refugees and they also were politically active raising funds for the free German uh, movement and and so on and Hilda helped a bit um, we've got things in the archive her little membership certificate of the refugee uh, center and uh, copies of stenciled tickets for uh, fundraising events um, so they were involved with that. And I think that might be on the steps either of the women's hostel or of the refugee centre. They, it's hard to tell, um, but one or, I think it's one or other of them. Um, maybe the women's hostel, but... Um, so they got through the war. Um, after the war, and it was only after the war that they found out what happened, um, Ceci found out through um, the Red Cross that her family had not survived except for one brother who managed to get to Israel. Um, the information came through about uh, Hilda's family, but she told me she didn't want to know and she was never actually told. So she, um, she, never, she never knew but formally, but she lost them all. And what were they to do after the war? Well, Hilda got work as a designer using her skills, a textile designer, and she worked for a firm, Friedlander, who the roots of the family were also uh, refugees who had come from Austria. And she became their, their head designer and their major uh, output, 1945 to 1955, 
um, it's silk scarves, it's got scarves, the little silk and another materials, um, was producing for Marks and Spencers. And um, uh, so Hilda, this is uh, Hilda here in her doing her design work. And um, so, but in 1955, there are some samples of the scarves in the uh, archive collections. I, I can't really show you very, any of them here. I don't have that access to that, but the, um, uh, and Ceci got work in a, new, in a tobacconist at, at Cheering Cross, just around the corner from where they lived. So they were both working. Um, when the company lost the contract for Marks and Spencers, Hilda lost, lost her position. And she then, for the, in the 50, late 50s and into the 60s, um, did a variety of things. But basically, she was doing freelance, um, or I've got to show you these as well, freelance uh, design work, graphic design work. So there's Hilda showing us um, one of her scars that there was very, the style that was very popular uh, at that period. Um, not all the scars that we've got in the archive collection were designed by her, but some we absolutely know where, um, which I think is, is really interesting. Um, and we absolutely know that this one here with the little aeroplanes uh, is one of her designs. And that is for the British Overseas Airways Corporation. So it's BOAC, um, the start of British Airways. And I'd love to connect that up with them at some point. Um, I'm sure that they would look very fetching wearing it in today. So maybe sometime we'll be able to do that. Um, but there, I, we've got Hilda's some of the notebooks. So we know she used to go to the Mitchell Library to research some of these themes for, you know, there was coronations, there was different kinds of dances, there were all sorts of different things um, that were illustrated in scarves that were the popular topics of the day and Hilda was producing them. And if you think back from her little school notebook, you can see the style is just really more professional, but the spirit is, some of it is, is still there in these little characters. I don't know how well you can see them, the Highlander and, and so on uh, around this, um, Map of this map of Scotland is lovely, um, and there's Hilda there, hmm, lovely. Um, so in her, when she then got, went on to do freelance design work, was quite a range of it. I don't know how well it was paid in those days. I'm sure it wasn't. Um, but she worked for Collins. She did this um, Child's Garden of Verses. She did, uh, as it says, profusely illustrated by Hilda Goldwag, um, and there you can see one of her little illustrations there. Um, these are not really good images, but uh, she also worked for, Glasgow seemed to have, and maybe it's the same in other places, I don't know, a myriad of local publishers, um, printing houses and publishers. And um, one of them, I've forgotten the name, they produced uh, these little magazines, weekly or monthly, monthly magazines. One was Sava to learn French, distance learning. And one was called Guten Tag to learn German distance learning. And of course, photography wasn't available in the same way for illustration work. So they employed freelancers to do it. And again, we've got sketch, we've got different stages of these, um, these because Hilda kept the final ones and she kept the different stages for some of them. And um, they're absolutely beautiful. You know, they're just enchanting. Um, they're obviously designed to illustrate simple lessons in learning French or learning German and their everyday lives. And I can see Kelvin Grove Art Gallery in it. I can see, you know, the, Cl the Clark Shoe Shop. You can just see all sorts of different things they are. And there's a myriad of them and they're completely wonderful. And a couple of years ago, a few years ago in the archives, we got, uh, we got a grant and we reproduced some of them, including the Christmas tree, um, into uh, packs that we could um, make them more widely available. And they are available still uh, for purchase, although I'm not sure if the archive shop is functioning quite as it can be at the moment, but you can go online and have a look and see. Um, and uh, I mean, they're just, I think they're just absolutely, they're lovely. But they, she was, they helped her keep a roof over her head. Um, she did this for the Church of Scotland, uh, designed their cradle roll, which they used for a long, long time. It's changed now, but they used her design for a very, very long time. That's in the archive collection as well. Um, 
but all the way through it's painting um she did paint i mean this one is from the 1950s um and this is hill street and that's Ceci lying on a banquette and just gives you a sense of what their flat was like unusually this one is painted on canvas because most of Hilda's paintings uh, were painted on board because there was no way she could afford canvas. Um, this, I actually have this painting because when Hilda passed away, I, um, I did actually beg the lawyer not to let her documents and photographs and all sorts of stuff just be lost. We couldn't go in the flat, obviously. And um, Hilda's uh, will was that Assessi had passed away Hilda's will was that everything should be sold and the money should go to Israel because Israel had given Ceci's uh, um, uh, brother a home and that's where it should go. Anyway, the lawyer, bless, did keep quite a lot of stuff um, and that's what's basically in the archives and um, uh, we were able to do that. But the rest of the artworks um, that we so I understood, went into a couple of auctions. And um, my partner and I went along and um, they weren't expensive. There were so many of them, and I suppose. Um, and uh, so we bought this one. So I have this on my wall just beside me here. And when it's a dark day, you don't see it. But funnily enough, the colours have come out, I think, fantastically well. I hope you can see it where you're look how you're looking on it. Um, because sometimes when I look at it, it's so dark. But you can see the cushion, you can see the bookcase, you can see the flowers. You just get a sense of um, what their, their uh, flat was like in Hill Street. And Ceci was a feature of so many, of Hill many, many, many of Hilda's paintings. There's one I've got coming up. Um, a, uh, it might be the next one, which if it is, it's, it was when I met Hilda, because um, you might want to turn away or not look at it, I don't know. When I met Hilda, the, um, she had her easel up in that room that you saw the wee, her sitting in, stack rack of paintings, her chair, the bonket, her bed, and the easel and the window and the wee cupboardy thing with all paints and all the rest of it. And the painting on the easel was, was Ceci. Now, Ceci died in 1998. Um, I met Hilda in uh, 2000 and, what was it, 2000 and, um, uh, 2004. So she'd been dead quite a long time, uh, quite a few years. But the last painting on Hilda's uh, easel was of Ceci in her final stages. Um, it wasn't the last painting that she did of Ceci because there's another lovely painting, which I don't have a slide of, which is in the archive, which was done in uh, the year after, actually, uh, Ceci died. And she it's a young Ceci, it's looking back to a young Ceci. Um, and it's striking, the colour's lovely, and everybody who comes into the archive that's on display is so many people comment on that painting, it's so arresting. But um, I know you're an art club, so I'm hoping you'll, it's okay to show you this because it is not this, oh no, this is a young one, sorry. There's a young one, that, that's another one I've got upstairs, beautiful, um, young Ceci. Yeah, I forgot about that one. But that's the last one that was on her, on her and it's uh, Ceci and I think it's really, yeah powerful but it says a lot about their relationship and everything and Hilda cared for Ceci till she passed away and and um, it was a hugely important relationship for them and that's the one oh I do have that sorry beg your pardon 1999 there's the one that's Ceci young Ceci looking back sorry forgot my images in the order of them lovely I think the styles that Hilda used, slightly different styles, quite often different paintings. She's, there's a lot of time you can see she's trying different, different um, ways of painting. So when I met her and I was working at Glasgow Museums at the time, um, knocked out by her stuff, I, I just knew that I couldn't say to Glasgow Museums, there's the most amazing 
artworks here, please, can we, can we do something working through Glasgow museums? There's no way that we would have been able to do that. But I had a, a young uh, colleague at the time, who was, um, she was a student uh, doing her um, museum studies course, gone on to be a, a very effective museum professional, Rowan Brown. And, um, and I asked Hilda, I said, look, can we list all your paintings that are here? And, and she agreed. And, um, and it was too much for me. So Rowan and I used to go every week. It was a joy to visit Hilda and we would go through her, uh, take out the paintings, take a snapshot on the camera and I uh, designed a sheet and we put in the information that she told us about them. And quite often she'd, and that picture that I showed you of her holding up the scarf, that was, that was one of them. Um, and she said, oh, don't like that one. That's no good. That's no good. And what did, I don't really, I'm trying to remember now what she meant when she said that's no good. I think she just meant she didn't like it. Didn't necessarily mean it was no good, but for some reason she, or, or it wasn't like on canvas. It wasn't good enough in, in some respect. So, um, but we just kept going. We just kept going. And then we thought, you know, um, there were other people who were, who knew Hilda, who talked to us. I mean, uh, down here, I don't know if people know Shulamit Spain and uh, Gerta Stevenson, um, and um, I don't know, but we thought it would be wonderful if we could do an exhibition of Hilda's paintings. And I just wanted to show these Glasgow paintings. I mean, there were masses of other paintings, portraits, still lives, um, yeah, yeah, land, other things. But I was just knocked out by Glasgow because it was my Glasgow, and. I went to Laura Hamilton, who's here, and uh, asked her if the Collins Gallery would be willing to host an exhibition. Uh, it was part of Strathclyde University. Um, um, I, I went through to the Museum Association Conference, was in Edinburgh that day, and I went through and, and, um, and asked her. And, um, and Laura was enthusiastic and wanted to know more, and the long and the short of it is that we did the exhibition and we uh, and the Collins published the catalogue and um, Hilda's, uh, we did this exhibition, Hilda Goldwags Glasgow and it was a sellout show. Um, and uh, so lots of her paintings have gone off to individual people's houses because they just struck a chord. Um, and uh, I mean the Strathclyde University bought some um, and uh, and it was it was a really successful exhibition and I know Hilda's in a in a wheelchair at the opening she wasn't she was absolutely capable of walking it was just because it was uh she was maybe 94 95 ish by that time um and it was a long stand so it was just to be more comfortable it wasn't that she wasn't able to walk um and there she I love this picture here of us this is uh, we took her down we went down to the Collins and uh, to meet, um, see the space because it wasn't quite as Hilda remembered the space. Uh, the Collins had put in a window on the street, so it was much lighter and brighter than Hilda remembered it. And um, a, so that's her meeting Laura and us talking about the, the fourth the exhibition that we were going to do. Uh, Laura was completely fantastic. It was a joy. Um, so we did the exhibition, which which was great and. Um, and uh, just, you know, all the time I knew Hilda, we just carried on, we celebrated her birthdays and um, she was just a, she was a lovely, lovely lady, a uh, lovely lady. And I did actually persuade her to gift, uh, um, it is a watercolour, funnily enough, I think, uh, of Ceci to the archives and it's in the archives. and. Uh, she also gave the other one, so she gave the two paintings, so an oil and a watercolour, to the archives. Um, but of course she didn't know that all her documents and stuff were going to come into the archive. Um, but I think she would be happy with it. I hope she would. I hope she would. Um, I, that's the last of the images that I've got. Um, I, so what I want to just add on at the end is to say that um, well, Hilda passed away, she died in January 2008. Um, and I said to you already about trying to save some of that material for the archive. 
So the collection has, is in the archive. Um, there's some material still to come in, but it is basically there. It's, uh, there's over 400 items. There's um, not a lot of paintings, there's, um, but there are actually more than I would initially think because there's some going back to her young years in um, Vienna that she brought over with her. And so there are some, um, there's all the sketchbooks, there's um, scarves, there's the, some of the, there's the illustration work, um, there's the passports and the school jotters and the documents, there's just a, a photographs and a very wide range of material there. Um, and over the years at the archives, we've seen a big increase in interest in, from schools and researchers, students, um, and others in studying and finding out about what happened in the, in the, in the Holocaust period here in Scotland and wanting to see Scottish uh, based material. And um, we've used Hilda's material in that way. And in the last quite a long number of years, um, we have been developing with Garnet Hill Synagogue Preservation Trust, who, who own Garnet Hill Synagogue, um, a, a plan to redesignate, in a sense, Garnet Hill Synagogue as a um, Scottish Jewish Heritage Centre. And within that, we're going to create a Scottish Holocaust Year Study Centre as an expansion of the Archive Centre, specifically to give access to this kind of material. And we're, within that, we're going to create a hands-on learning kit, and Hilda's one of that, and it's up for targeted at school children. Of course, at the moment, it's all focused on people coming in, which is what we want. But with the current um, pandemic, um, we need to start thinking about how we can maybe do that in a different way, which is a whole world of checking out copyright and all those kind of issues that we don't have to deal with when it's, when it's in-house. And of course, the archives is fundamentally a voluntary body. So it's a huge, uh, big undertaking to go down that route. Um, where we got to in the uh, Heritage Centre is that work on site started um, with the sort of physical renovation areas, which is all in the lower floor of the synagogue um, in January, but stopped on the 24th of March because of the COVID-19 um impact and while lots of things are ready to go the interpretation and so on and all sorts of elements of it digital catalog we are kind of in limbo a bit we're able to do progress some things but we're kind of in limbo and sandra who's joining us here today is one is one of our the volunteers who signed up to help with a particular group within this uh, heritage center because a lot again a lot of the stuff will be volunteer led uh, when it gets up and running, um, but we're going to generate small exhibitions, um, most, you know, looking at the archive collections, can be from other things as well, but initially, and um, so we're working on that. We've been finding out lots of interesting information because we're looking at the actual founding of Garner Hill Synagogue, who were the people that were doing it, where did they live, what did they do, um, what documents and stuff are there around, and it's taken us into avenues of like the photographers, some of whom were Jewish, who were around in, in that period and just all, all the newspapers and all kinds of interesting things. So I think that'll be a real nice uh, little exhibition and events and activities that will come from that uh, once we're able to get up and running. Um, so I think maybe I should stop there and um, uh, happy to chat or a bit more about, about Hilda or anything else if I can help. And I hope that's been, I uh, hope it's interesting. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'm going to stop your screen sharing. I'm going to bring us all back together and I'm going to put it on gallery view. Um, yes. So thank you so much, Deborah, for a fantastic <laughs> Yes, you can see everybody.